there everyone, and welcome to the Weekly Roundup, your bite-sized summary of the latest and greatest in data science. I'm Isabella Leslie miller and I'll be taking you through some of the week's biggest stories, from industry use cases and career insights to the latest innovations coming from researchers. In today's edition, we'll be covering how La Liga is taking a new, data-driven approach to football analytics, and how OpenAI's DALI 2 system turns your sentences into photorealistic images. Please do let us know in the comments what your favorite story of the week is, and don't forget to subscribe to stay in the loop about all things data science. Our first story this week has to do with some of the industry's biggest movers and shakers, with Andreessen Horowitz releasing their 2022 report on the top 50 startups in data science. The report finds that companies in the query and processing category are earning the lion's share of investment in the data space, receiving 50% of the funding, despite only being 20% of the number of companies in the top 50. These 50 companies are collectively valued at over $100 billion, and have managed to raise a whopping $14.5 billion in capital over the past year. Unsurprisingly, 20 of these 50 companies have reached unicorn status. One of the heavy hitters in the query and processing category is Databricks, who secured $1.6 billion in their most recent funding round, showing the world just how important data infrastructure and tooling technology is in the data space today. Another standout firm is Hex, who just raised over $52 million in a Series B funding round that saw Andreessen Horowitz, Snowflake, and Databricks themselves come on board as investors. Hex aims to be the interface for the modern stack, and have almost doubled the size of their team since October, mentioning that they're focusing on building a diverse team to move them into the next phase of their business. We're also very excited about collaborative workspaces here at Datacamp, and we can't wait to see where Hex will go in the future. Moving on from the world of business, we'll step into the world of research and art, and take a look at OpenAI's latest iteration of DALI. The company announced DALI 2 on the 6th of April, and has once again impressed the world with a resolution that's four times better than the original DALI, which turns sentences into images using deep learning. Since the initial outpouring of bizarre imagery, like avocado arm chairs and cubes with the texture of a porcupine, OpenAI have clearly been hard at work, bringing us fully editable images and the promise of a public release in the future. The technology underpinning DALI 2 is no less impressive than its stunning output with a two-stage process that first passes text and then creates images. A written prompt is processed by OpenAI's own clip language model, giving the program a list of key characteristics that an image needs to have in order to satisfy the prompt. After this, DALI 2 uses a special diffusion AI model to generate an image that contains those key characteristics. Normally, diffusion AI models are trained to unblur pixelated images and return them to their original photorealistic state. DALI 2 takes this one step further and uses randomly generated pixels as the basis for its unblurring, allowing the program to create truly original imagery. OpenAI plans to release DALI 2 to the public sometime in the future, but is first focusing on ensuring that the software isn't being used to create problematic images. In the same way as Instruct GPT was used to curtail GPT-3's toxic text production, OpenAI plans to limit DALI 2's potential for misuse before rolling it out to the public. You can take a look at DALI 2 using the link in the description below, and we'd love to hear in the comments what images you're going to ask for when it's released to the public. Our next story takes a look at an article written by Mikkel Denkso, the head of data at Monzo, who dug through more than 4,000 data points on Arta.com and Labels.fyi to see how the world's biggest tech companies pay their employees both across regions and compared to one another. This was spurred by the growing trend of salary transparency in tech, with the UK introducing new policy measures in early March to encourage more honest discussions about compensation. The 2022 median total compensation for data professionals in the US is $187,000. This varies a lot across companies and seniority, with Netflix being a clear leader when it comes to data salaries. This comes as no surprise, since Netflix has a specific policy of paying employees well above industry average, with the US median compensation for data science roles at Netflix being $450,000. As far as seniority goes, the article notes that big tech companies pay very well for advancement. If a level 1 or a 2 is an entry-level job and level 6 is an expert or manager, 
The data shows that many employees almost double their salary, with employees in level 6 positions earning around $400,000 on average. There is also a lot of variance in salary across regions, with Europe standing at a median data salary of $108,000 compared to $187,000 in the US and $87,000 in the rest of the world. Moving on to the world of business intelligence, we'll take a look at the latest Magic Quadrant report from Gartner. The famous Magic Quadrant showcases leaders, challenges, niche players and visionaries in different technology categories. The newly released report on business intelligence tools emphasizes the massive increase in the number of people using BI platforms. All types of teams are taking up BI tools, thanks to new use cases stemming from the pandemic and a growing push towards organizational data literacy. This proliferation is widening the scope of BI tools beyond just simply creating visualizations and dashboards to delivering enriched contextual analysis tailored to users' needs. One of the clear things we can see in the report is Microsoft's continued dominance as a market leader. Since bundling Power BI with Office 365 at a reduced rate, Microsoft has seen massive growth in the number of users accessing the platform, which has drawn focus to the capabilities of the platform to deliver on users' BI needs. This growing interest in tools like Power BI and Tableau is something we've observed here at DataCamp, with hundreds of thousands of learners completing our Power BI and Tableau courses. In addition to highlighting the success of Power BI, the report also shows plenty of movement in the visionary space, with Sysense, Oracle, and SAP all improving both their completeness of vision and their ability to execute on that vision. Both Sysense and Oracle spent 2021 improving customers' engagement and streamlining workflows, while SAP focused on usability and UX improvements. We can also see the entry of new players into the Magic Quadrant with tools like Telius and Zoho entering the space. What are your favorite BI tools? Let us know in the comments. And for our final story this week, La Liga's analytics team have partnered with Databricks to deploy a data lake house within the league's analytics infrastructure. This will allow La Liga Tech, the new consolidated analytics wing of the league, to structure and manage their data in a much more efficient way, helping the analytics team take their work to a new level. Rafael Zambrano, the league's head of data science, has confirmed that this is allowing La Liga to employ machine learning at a much larger scale than has previously been possible. The shiny new implementation of machine learning will not only allow for more interesting insights, but it will also be working to reduce player injuries by predicting them before they occur. La Liga plans to share their insights with both football clubs and fans, and hopes to democratize data for the whole industry. A good indication of the central role data is going to play in the league is the recent release of La Liga Pass. The tech division rolled out the new platform in Indonesia and Thailand, using data to identify what content fans are interested in and using the platform to provide it for them. From content in specific languages to certain kinds of content like analysis versus interviews versus documentaries. La Liga Pass is reportedly inspired by the NBA, who have been leaders in the sports analytics world for many years. Overall, it's safe to say that fans can get excited not only about La Liga Pass, but also about how data is going to shape and improve the league in the near future. That brings us to the end of this week's roundup. Thanks for joining us! We're really excited about this series, and we can't wait to see what data news stories we'll get to cover in the weeks to come. Let us know in the comments what you'd like to hear more about, or tell us your favorite data science news story. Don't forget to tag your data buddies and subscribe for future updates on the latest and greatest in the world of data. That's all for now. See you next week.